a.m. And it is 9 a.m. now. And we're already off? Wow, cool. TheHakeReport.com. Boom, 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 boom. We have uh, American Anchor Baby coming up after Joelle Friday TV. Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday at noon, and then Friday at 4. It's uh, 9 a.m. here in Los Angeles. Joel Friday TV filled in for Hake on Friday and Monday. I'm still uh, going through uh, the Monday show. He basically co-hosted with uh, Sean. Shout out to Sean, the producer. Very interesting, guys. It's Wednesday, March 20th, A.D. 2024. We're going to have a fun, hopefully a fun show. Uh, I didn't get to Hassan Piker and Destiny, his mother, (laughs) slave-owning mother, (laughs) yesterday. So hopefully I'll get to that today, is the plan, man. And your calls and your super chats and uh, some other things going on in the world. Okay. All right. Um, We have... What else is going on? What else is going on in the world that I wanted to touch on? I did see some of your chats were pretty interesting regarding the uh, the news yesterday. Haiti, the invasion into America. They're going to... St- they're going to let Texas stop it. They're not going to let Texas stop it. They're going to let Texas stop it. They're not going to let Texas stop it, the invasion, because it's a federal issue. The f- they're stopping the feds from, com- from enforcing the law, which the feds are not enforcing the law. It's ridiculous. So I'll touch on that and the, the happiness, hopefully, of uh, the nations. The happiness index. And our strawberries dirty? <laughs> but anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. Hey, guys! y'all doing? I am fine. I'm wearing my Knowledge is Poison t-shirt, thehakereport.com, and look for the Teespring link, uh, teespring.com slash stores slash thehakereport, or thehakereport.creator-spring.com is the same thing. Just go to thehakereport.com and look for the Teespring link in the, uh, menu. Um, Knowledge is Poison. Uh, what did Eve do? She ate from the tree of knowledge, and she surely died. Poison. Poison. (laughs) Charlie Church says, oh no, what about strawberries? I can hardly eat as it is. Everything is poisonous. Yeah, they say it's pesticides, so don't be a pest, (laughs) Charlie Church, and then you'll be okay. No, but knowledge, uh... As the Bible says, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And what else puffs up? Poison. You get poisoned, or venom or something, or a bee sting. You swell up. Puffs up. So, have, pick your poison and take your poison in bits. Don't be all voracious with your knowledge, seeking after knowledge. I know, you guys, like Flat Earth Victory, I think, says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, And that's in the Bible, too. Okay, so I'm quoting the Bible saying, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And he's quoting the Bible saying, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So which one is right? They're both right. They're both right. And sometimes you have knowledge that you think is important, but it's actually not important. Like you think that you know the earth is flat. (laughs) Shout out to the flat earthers. What a mess. This is a no-pest zone. No, no, no. We have our, our snakes, pests, 
the snake pit snakes welcome for the most part. Exceptions to the rule. Hake won't wear a collar for us, but he wears it for the government, SMH. <laughs> yeah, true. This is a collar, right? It, I mean, it has the collar. It just doesn't have a fold on the collar. So let me tell you about strawberries since Charlie Church is, is concerned. According to the news, Hake News, <sighs> you want to watch out, okay? According to CNN, Dirty Dozen, they call it. The Dirty Dozen. Strawberries top the list. Straw, not star. Strawberries top the, this year's Dirty Dozen list, a ranking of the fruits and vegetables contaminated with the most amount of pesticides. And I feel like CJ from Texas called me to clarify what the issue is, because it may or may not actually even be the pesticides being the problem. So that the pesticides are killing something that's good for you, or I don't know, or leaving it for something else to take over that's worse than the pests. I don't, I forget what he said. Uh, a ranking of fruits and vegetables contaminated by the most amount of pesticides. However, studies have found that levels of pesticides in adults and children can drop up to 95% after a switch to an organic diet. Sounds like a scam, huh? Because organic fruits and vegetables. What does it even mean? Everything's organic. Everything is almost everything, unless it's dead the whole time. Because organ means life, right? A, a portion of life, like an or this is an organ, this is my arm. <laughs> Whatever. Um, they say, though, that, listen, approximately 95% of, this is from Commie Nonsense Network, Non-organic strawberries, leafy greens such as spinach and kale, collard greens, mustard greens, grapes, peaches, and pears tested by the United States government. They're truly looking out for you. Can, some of them are. Contained uh, detectable levels of pesticide per 2024 Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce. Nectarines, apples, bell peppers, hot peppers, cherries, blueberries, green beans. Rounded out the list of the dozen. Twelve. Most, uh, I don't want to subscribe, most contaminated samples of produce, dubbed the Dirty Dozen by the Environmental Working Group, EWG, Environmental and Health Advocacy Organization. Probably a mixed bag in terms of their values and their level of honesty. That has produced the annual report since 2004. Pesticides, they say, have been linked to studies in in studies to preterm births, preemies, you know, when, you're, when the, the child is born too small and too early and has to be taken care of and has problems even later in life sometimes, preemies. Anybody a preemie? Press one if you're a preemie. Press two if you're a based on time birth. Press three if you are late. Congenital malformations such as neural tube defects Spontaneous abortions, whoa, and an increase in uh, genetic damage in human beings. Exposure to pesticides also associated with lower... <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> lower concentrations of, of life in the men. Life in the men. <laughs> you know, the seed, we'll call it. Uh, heart disease, cancer, and other disorders. Farm workers who use or are exposed to pesticides are at the highest risk per studies. 2022 meta-analysis found workers exposed to pesticides five times as likely almost to have DNA damage, while a February study found children exposed in early age showed poor neurodevelopment from infancy to adolescence. Now, there may be other factors that kind of correlate to this, and so who knows? It's not all bad news. Avocados, sweet corn, pineapples, onions, and papayas are the are part of the Clean 15. Charlie Church. <laughs> Charlie Church. Two. Two people were, were on time. I see a lot of twos. What's a four? Four means you were, wish you were never born. <laughs> nah. I, I don't know. Um, the Clean 15. Conventionally grown produce with the least amount of trace pesticides. I don't know what the problem is. Um... Frozen sweet peas, asparagus, honeydew melons. Ugh. 
I mean, they're okay. They're they're good in s- smoothies. Kiwis, kiwis are kind of good for you. They have vitamin C. Cabbage, watermelons, mushrooms, mangoes, sweet potatoes, and carrots. Wow. You know, uh, uh, CJ in Texas has criticized Hake for eating carrots, sometimes beets, sometimes uh, turmeric, 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 turmeric. I I like turmeric the best, but I don't think anybody pronounces it turmeric. Turmeric. He says, you dig those things out of the mud. Well, guess what? What's mud made out of but dirt and water? We are water. We're 80% water or something like that, some of us. And then dirt, God made dirt. God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Pineapple is good, good for ya, says Kevin. <laughs> Joel Friday says, if you lie, God knows why. So, that's the stuff. That's, that's the information. Uh, Sion says to wash your uh, strawberries in vinegar. Sounds like a lot of trouble. <laughs> Terrible. Ginger, yeah. All right, so that's the health thing. By the way, a uh, little side note on the health. The far left females at the Skim report that intermittent fasting, research from the American Heart Association, which gains money, power, and importance by people dying or being afraid of dying or suffering with heart disease, right? They thrive on your illness, American Heart Association. (laughs) I'm saying that sort of mockingly, but that's why it exists, is because people have heart problems. And uh, so they're a mixed bag in terms of of their values, I think. They might be liberal, too, by the way. It says that people who restrict their eating to an eight-hour window, you know, intermittent fasting, where you fast for 16 hours or whatever, and then eat only within this eight-hour window, could be, could be 91% more likely to die from cardiovascular disease, they say. Sounds sort of suspicious to me. Both for and against the intermittent fasting thing and for and against the American Heart Association. Because the American Heart Association, I, I wonder if they, intermittent fasting is something that you uh, have as a self-discipline thing, right? Where you don't eat for 16 hours. That takes some form of discipline, physical discipline. It has grown in popularity over the years, thanks in part to celebs, say the ladies at the skim. Still, researchers said more work needs to be done to understand why restricted eating can lead to cardiovascular disease. I don't know if that can. It, can, it may or may not. But it's kind of like you can fix yourself, your health, with ha- good habits, sleeping enough, drinking enough water. You don't need to buy any products. And when you don't need to buy any products, such as medication, um, fancy foods that they make for you, that these special companies make for you, um, money-making things, you know? Then, like, you can exercise at home. You don't have to buy a gym ticket or whatever. Then they can't make money off of you. And then also, if you're healthy, then American Heart Association might go out of business if most people are healthy. Then nobody's going to donate to them because everybody's healthy. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know if that'll ever happen. <laughs> so that's, that's inf- interesting information, huh? Kind of. I wonder if the type of stuff that they're eating or the way that they gorge themselves is, could be a problem. Who knows? I've never tried that intermittent fasting thing. Fasting is great for us. These liberals just want us fat, says Terry. They say that it, yeah, 
is I think it's probably good for you health health wise to do it. And as Joel has said, and JLP has said. see your relationship with the food, like you're uh, using it as an escape and using it for uh, pleasure and to cure boredom and feed the ego. Not good. All right. That's the news on that. Before I get to this happiness thing, I want to talk about Hassan Piker and Destiny... Destiny, both of these people, former guests of the JLP show, or at least the Fallen State. Has, was Destiny on the Fallen State? He was, he was on the JLP show once or tw- once. The Fallen State, was that with his then fiance, now uh, estranged wife or whatever? And then uh, Hassan Piker was on the Fallen State. Destiny, of course, was in the... Uh, Men's History Month free speech forum about the right to carry awesome guns. He wanted to protect people. Oh, yeah, I think he was on the Fallen State versus Vincent James about guns as well. So-called gun control. So many interactions. A hake is debated destiny about January 6th and some other things. Slavery and some other things. Uh, the transgender th- stuff. I traveled for modern day debate to meet up <clears throat> with different debate interlocutors or whatever they're called, including Destiny and others. Pretty fun. A couple of years back, I think. So I got this off of Reddit, Clip 11. Hopefully this plays. I think it will play. I set it to play. From Reddit. Yes, sometimes I go on Reddit. Hassan Piker on Destiny's Mother whipping slaves, according to his interpretation. The mind lying to you. This is an example of it. On her Cuba sugar plantation, because Destiny is part Cuban. At age four, here's Destiny talking to his mother. And uh, Hassan Piker, fellow liberal communist, woke bay. These are all liberals. Destiny is Stephen Bunnell, the second, I think. Liberal activist Hassan Piker, basically, like more like a communist activist, champagne socialist, they call him because he's very rich. Here's the confusion from Hassan Piker one S in Hassan, not to be confused with our Hassan, two S's. Here it is, I think. Apparently, according to Destiny's mother, uh, his family owns slaves in (laughs) in their plantation. Those are not my words. That's Destiny's mother on stream saying that. I don't know if it's real. It came across like a joke to me. I'll be honest with you, because why was she so callous when talking about her slaves, but her family's slaves? (sighs) But yeah. Somebody wants to know which part of Cuba we came from. My grandfather's sugar plantation. Yeah, with us, with the. <laughs> I know. We- Where we lived in Cuba, you would have enjoyed because um, we lived at least the last period of time that I remember. We lived on my grandfather's sugar cane plantation. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going out with a. I don't know if it's called a sickle something or other that you went, mm-hmm. and I was. I left there at five years in one day, so that had to be when I was four. Is that seriously your claim that they had slaves? That she used the word plantation? You know you can have a plantation without slaves? Well, why does she do this whipping motion? Like, (laughs) I thought she was just joking. Now you're making it... Now you're making me think that she wasn't joking. Why did she say I I went out with the whip and did the whipping motion? (laughs) Was that also... What? Was she just... Says she went out with a sickle. Oh, she was cutting crops in the sugar plantation. Oh, got it. It was just one of those plantations devoid of slaves. Got it. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Hassan Piker. Getting educated by his chat, just like Hake. Just like Hake. 
Hassan Piker, I kind of like him. He said, I'm just an idiot. He was interviewed by Pierce Morgan, saying, I'm just an idiot with a microphone. <laughs> hey, Hassan Piker being inattentive. Not being attentive. What's wrong with the blue shirt guy? He doesn't move, says Nikki from Texas. Well, that's because he was paused on that video. I don't know if that was Destiny's dad. That's Stephen Bunnell. He goes by Stephen now, but he's also Destiny. He's known by Destiny. S-T-E-V-E-N, I think. He doesn't spell it with a P-H. Like normal white people. He's not a normal white. <laughs> he's Cuban and maybe other things. Oh, he's Jewish. I think I knew that. Like our border secretary, Mayorkas. Oh. Uh, I don't care about owning slaves. Got nothing to do with me. I know. <laughs> but it, it is funny. Here in Hassan Paiku, who's like, I maybe have 10 years on him or 12, 15 years on him. He's probably in his 20s or 30s, I guess. And I remember the first time I heard JLP say, I grew up on a plantation picking cotton. I'm like, <gasps> I was like, Ugh. it was like a shock to me to hear that because I didn't know anybody who'd grown up on a plantation. One of those, he thinks that plantations are generally slave-owning plantations, but they're not. <laughs> he said, those are not my words, that's what she said, but she did not say that. And she did not say she had a whip. I caught it this time, this is my third time watching that clip, or fourth maybe, third or fourth. And this is the first time I caught that she actually said, what is that word? What is the name of that thing? Sickle? And then she uh, did a swiping, a side swiping motion. Different from Hake's crack the whip motion. When I tell you guys to uh, go outside and crack the whip or get the whip cracked on you and keep a good attitude about it. And treat your slaves well if you're a master. And uh, obey your master if you have one. But it's a different motion. <laughs> and the, the very attentive Reddit people were saying, oh, she was cracking the whip, whipping her slaves at age four. He's caught up in his thoughts about slavery, says Alex. Yeah. <laughs> it's a farming tool, a sickle. You harvest the crops or, the, or a scythe. A scythe or a sickle, I don't know. A sickle is the little hand one that has a C, and it's used by C for communist. The communists pretend like they're the workers. But they, they make a job out of getting out of work. Terrible. So they uh, harvest sh sugar. <laughs> Somehow. Sid C S. C-Y-T-H-E, not Sith, not S-I-T-H, S-C-Y-T-H-E, I think. And then the, the Sith is the big one, like the Grim Reaper has. Yeah, Death, also known as Norm MacDonald, right? Didn't Norm MacDonald, wasn't he Death in that one degenerate TV show? I don't know what you're saying, Hague. He's... I'm just saying Hassan Piker is ignorant and jumping to conclusions about what he's hearing. And isn't that... Yes, yeah, rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Isn't that everybody? Well, but especially... dummies who jump to conclusions. <laughs> like Trump said. When Trump said they're not sending their bests, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're R-wordists, apists, Ray. And some, I assume, are good people. Oh, it's pronounced scythe? Scythe? Oh, I thought it was Sith. It looks and sounds cooler, I think, saying Sith. But it might be pronounced scythe. Scythe. Thank you, Carver. Hake being edu educated by his chat, just like Hassan Piker, educated by his chat. <laughs> I, I, for one, find it somewhat interesting to hear, to listen to people who don't know everything, either admit they don't know stuff or kind of learn on the fly or whatever. I find it sort of interesting. 
Sith is Star Wars. I don't even really believe you. Pronounce. S C Y. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Scythe. Oh no! That's American pronunciation, scythe. scythe. Oh, British pronunciation is also scythe. Wait. Sounds like scythe. I don't like that. I don't know. I don't like <laughs> I don't like them pronouncing it properly. But it, it makes sense that it would be pronounced scythe actually. I guess. Yeah, I'm serious, Crane. <laughs> okay. All right. So Hassan Piker, um, an ignoramus. <laughs> And he thought that she was joking. And now he's, he's concerned. What a mess. Terrible. For uh, communists, for communists, slavery is the worst thing, I think. But in reality, it's not the worst thing. It's not. It may be an evil among many various evils. It doesn't matter. He acknowledges poison. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> that sounds maybe sarcastic. Um, just so you know, just so you know, they're po about pointing out other people's evil and not checking themselves. Or they have a confusing... Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. All right. How are you, sir? Doing fine. Nice to see you. Fake news, not fake news. That's right. <laughs> What's that idea? Hassan stepped out. Oh, Hassan okay. stepped out. Pardon this. Pardon of my strange interlude. Are you on live right now? Yeah, we're live. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, JLP. Nice to see you, man. Yeah, you too. A friend and fan of the shows stopped in, guys. Stopped in. For communists, private property is the most evil thing, says Terry. Uh, yeah, sort of. Check yourself. I know that the communists like to do these things called struggle sessions, where they surround you and you have to comply and they, they beat you up and, and shame you and you have to be like, oh, and you have to go to sensitivity training and stuff like that. And then you have to hold to their false values. But that's not real either. It's not. It's a mess. It's mama. It's satanic. And you'll find that it's not different from the uh, phony Christians. Who are also all force you to comply. <laughs> Or they'll call you a, um, what do they call you? A blasphemer. Or a, what is, heretic, her heresy. And be all phony, phony self-righteous. And phony humble. What a mess. Anyway. You can call in 888-775-3773. Um, I will try to get to all of your calls and your super chats. And we'll get to this happiness story and maybe some other news. Speaking of happiness, let me talk about this, um, a little bit more about this thing in um, my super chats, Popcorn's Thump Keg. Bought that coffee last week, saying, I want to go back to something I asked you about welfare benefits. I asked you if you personally could get $1,000 a month and $400 in EBT, which is food stamps, I guess, uh, benefits from the government. Would you take it? And you said, probably, get that bag. I mentioned this late yesterday. So if that's the case to you or anyone else who thinks 
that people are wrong for accepting welfare benefits, but would take them yourself if you could get it. I don't quite understand the moral, maybe, maybe moral issue that you have with people who get those benefits. Again, having acknowledged that you would do it too. Two O's in, T -O in two. Is it inwardly a jealousy thing? Well, that wouldn't be moral, would it? <laughs> that would be f fake moral. I wish I could get it too. And outwardly, it's outrage. I've heard you call out people for being upset about things they do themselves. Shouldn't be upset about anything. Jesus and others in the Bible, I think, call out people who judge uh, liars. Do you lie? Or whatever. Just like the reparations point I made, people can say what they want about it. They're lazy, they don't deserve it, etc. But watch how many people apply for it. Just because you apply for it doesn't mean that it's not wrong. And yes, you're blah, 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 blah. I mentioned that I wouldn't read that part. Um, and I mentioned yesterday that one, it spoils. You should not take it if it's going to spoil you. And most of us are going to get spoiled by those things. And I mentioned that I had a caller who said that they've taken away the men's uh, rights and responsibility to their children and enabled this divorce stuff and separation and parents not working it out and staying together. And they've, um, and so this man did not apply for a full custody as 50% custody, in part, in large part perhaps, because he likes smoking pot or weed or marijuana and playing video games, or I don't know if he said playing video games. Because in a selfish sense, you're quote unquote free and don't have that responsibility, why would you take it? You're enabled not to take it. And they say, oh, men are, men are just lazy. They're deadbeats. Well, they're encouraged and enabled to be deadbeats. People, human beings are weak. And you knowing, your, you knowing your weakness, why would you tempt yourself with this stuff? Except that it's so tempting <laughs> to get spoiled on the welfare, spoiled on the, um, on the separation, spoiled on the taking away of your rights and responsibility to your children. And two, I didn't mention, that it's taking somebody else's money. The government has no right to your money. Properly speaking, in reality, they own you. You are a slave to the government. Give your money to the government. <laughs> Unless you want to take that risk and be one of those people who does not pay taxes, um following the laws, the loopholes in the laws to not pay ta not to pay taxes because there are ways that you can get out of paying some stuff that you don't actually owe because by law you don't actually owe it but sometimes in some ways you're not aware that you don't owe it so you pay it and then the government takes it because the government doesn't necessarily know that different details about your life that makes you exempt from these some of these taxes or uh, whatever. There are people, Vox Day, I've mentioned Vox Day, his father is or was or whatever, a tax protester. So he refused to pay taxes, not because, not necessarily because he was greedy or s selfish or whatever. The government's greedy and selfish. But anyway, um, because he believed that it was unconstitutional, the government had no right to his taxes. So he did prison time and he was willing to do prison time for it. I've had callers call into my show, and I disavow it, said, uh, you, you pay taxes, you are supporting the Borsh, the border mess, the Ukraine war, all these evil things that the government's doing with your money. And it's because of fear. It's not always because of fear. It's called having some good sense sometimes. <laughs> But uh, anyway, it's wrong partly because of that. Redistribution of wealth is evil. 
it's playing it's the government playing mama and the people who accept it they know that it's spoiling them they know that they don't have a right to it deep down at least maybe <laughs> If you don't pay for the country, should you have a vote? Asks Delano. Maybe not. Yeah, I think maybe, I think probably not. Socialism makes men weak. Makes weak men. True. Same thing with this reparations thing. Like, reparations for what? You had nothing to do with it. You've, you're reaping the benefits of being in America. Uh, you don't know what it was like. And if you did know what it was like, it hasn't, doesn't mean you get repaired. For what? What's to repair? The people who wronged you are the people in your family. Parents. And then you wrong yourself. The way you live and all that stuff. Or if you want to call it living, you know. Terrible. Uh, they, you know what they say about money? Easy come, easy go. If it comes easy, it's going to go easy. <laughs> Hake, are you on a rant? Somewhat. I'm answering the guy's question about wealth, what's wrong with welfare. Morally wrong with people who accept welfare benefits. Quote, unquote. Terrible. I'm surprised that people don't, maybe they do know it, or maybe they don't know it, or maybe they don't want to know it. one 775 Alex in California is on the line. What's up, Alex? How you doing? Hey, Jake. Hey. Not bad. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Um, so I work two jobs. I'm not a bum. I work two jobs, but I can tell you one of the best parts of my day is smoking pot, playing video games. <laughs> I disavow. Don't, don't follow his example, kids. You call that the best part of your day, really? I mean, there's some days where that's all, that's all I'm looking forward to. You know, work, work's not always, you know, exciting and fun. Right. Should you be seeking excitement and fun? No, probably not. So why do you call it the best part of your day? Because I'm I'm a sinner and I'm a beta. <laughs> um All right, what about the work you're not able to work and not be thinking about thinking about it or feeling about it or getting into your thinking and feeling about it? Uh, no, I'm able to work and, and not worry about it. I'm just saying it's, you know, after work, you know, it's like the most enjoyable thing. I don't like to sit around and watch TV and Netflix like everybody else. I like to interact, you know? Oh, okay. Intera so when you're playing video games, you're interacting with people. Yeah, like online with people from around the world. Yeah. yeah. Like VR chat, like American Anchor Baby does. Yeah, there's like an all chat. I get to talk to Middle Easterners, a lot of Asians, uh, Indians, all sorts of different people. So you have a, like full blown conversations with them. And th is that more of the, is that more of the draw than the video game itself? Um, hard to say. I mean, there is a lot of bonding. I met a few, few really cool people who are playing. Uh, it's called PUBG. Um, it's kind of like Call of Duty. Okay. And then you're, and during this video game playing, you are, Also smoking pot? Uh, beforehand, beforehand. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Well, are these are full-time jobs or two part-time jobs or one part-time, one full-time? Uh, one full-time, one part-time. And there are physical jobs where you're doing physical work? One of them is uh, security overnight. The other one is dog training during the day. Oh, okay. So the, those are both, at, at least you're on your feet, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm moving around, doing stuff. Yep. Yeah. So well, yeah, you I don't just wanted to put that out there that, that you know, put, I, I think there's worse things in life than pot and video games. 
But the real reason I called you, um, I, wa I wanted to know. Oh what no, your but opinion I but is. I bring up but I bring up the pot and video games. Okay, before before you get into the, your other point, I yeah. brought up the pot and video games as uh, a waste of time, especially if oh, you I, rather. Uh, it's definitely a waste of time. Uh, that's that's actually another point I didn't bring up is I don't play when I um, like I don't use it as. How can I say this? I only use it to waste time. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I don't do it on my days off when I have things I want to do. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. When there's a winding down. So uh, I brought it up to criticize the father who didn't want to apply for full custody, and I understand it, of his son or daughter because he'd rather smoke pie. Because <laughs> he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to take care of his son because he's, his son's been taken away from him at least 50% custody, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just talk about it as a spoiling thing. And... Uh, yeah, we human beings get spoiled with the comforts and entertainment right, and right. distractions of life. And so in that sense, although for the, time, for the while we may be enjoying it in our youth, it's uh, kind of eating away at life and responsibility and stuff. I guess the simple, yeah, that's that's definitely not good. Um, I would say the way that I use it is more like how someone would come home from work and sit on their butt and watch Netflix for five hours. I'm just not into that. I'd rather yeah, rather interact with people and play. Nice. Um, All right. Yeah. The re yeah. Go ahead. Main reason, I, yeah. Main reason I called. Um, I'm really interested in in uh, near death experiences and the the claims that people have. In your opinion, is that stuff all hogwash, or do you do you find any merit to any of that stuff, or is it is that something you even care about at all? I uh, I don't care that much about it. You, um, by near death experiences, you mean some people who say they have died and then come back, or yeah, people when they who've been either close like go to, to hell death. or they see Jesus and, and things like that, or their life, their whole life flashes before them, or something like that. Uh, I'm I'm focusing more on like people who say they've they've gone to hell or they've they've met Jesus. There was a, there was a guy who was black, who was into the black uh -oh. thing, and he says that he died, or nearly died, and he, um, became, Joel mentioned this ball of light thing, he became like a ball of light or something, and mm -hmm. he was in total peace, and it totally changed, and then he came back. And he came back partly because he saw this woman overreacting and crying, and he felt bad for the woman. And so he uh, came back to try to, like, comfort the woman. And um, so that now he's very different in his outlook on, mm -hmm. on life. He doesn't fall for the Black Lives Matter thing anymore and the anger thing. Uh, and... She, JLP covered it months ago. Did you did you catch that? Um, I didn't, but I, I watch a few channels about the subject. I'm okay. pretty into it. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting to me because uh, that that was something I've been into before I I stumbled upon JLP in your show. Yeah, and it it trips me out because some of these people will say you know they they talk to Jesus or God. And he's giving them a message that's literally the same stuff that, like, JLP's saying, like, drop the anger. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's. I feel it's super interesting, because if it's all just, like, in their imagination and a bunch of hullabaloo, it's pretty accurate. Uh, a lot of these people are seeing the same stuff. Um, and then some of, I've, I've heard some people describing, going through, like, the Holy Trinity, like, what that actually is. I know a lot of Christians are arguing about what that is. Um, but basically... Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I feel like that stuff has some, some authenticity to it because a lot of people are saying the same stuff, and a lot of the messaging is similar to what you guys are saying. Yeah, um, David Williamson and near death experiences, JLP show experts, uh, discussed this five months ago or so, mm -hmm. um, back in August of 2023. It was pretty interesting. 
Um, yeah, I mean, when, when I watch them, usually it, it kind of puts puts me in check. I think about my behaviors and such. Yeah, it kind of puts me also at ease to to know that you know that's that it's real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. It does. It's kind of good to have a. They call it. There's a word called circumspect when you have like a big picture you're aware of uh, the big picture if you will in life where you don't get caught up with details that don't matter Cernovich a guest on the fallen state years ago said what you focus on is what seems important to you and uh, that's so true and it doesn't even and most of the stuff that you what we focus on does not matter at all. It's ridiculous. Is that what mm-hmm. you mean by the uh, by this near death stuff? These people talking about life. Well, yeah, I mean specifically like the people who who say they've gone to hell or they've seen Jesus. I just find that super interesting because they come back with with uh, you know messaging that's like super profound, or at least it's to me. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of them are talking about dropping the anger and, and forgiveness, and I'd never heard about any of that stuff before listening, uh, you know, to that or or you guys. So yeah, there's got to be there's got to be something there, I think. Right, and it it makes so much sense too, and anger being the root of things like shyness, fear, uh, and all that stuff. People think oh, fear leads to anger. I think it's the same thing, <laughs> kind of the other way around, almost. Um, are you, so hispa- would you say in, 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 uh, general, like that you do think there's something there or, or is it all just hogwash? No, no, no. I, I think it depends. It depends on what they're doing. Cause there are these little Christian kids. I read this story some months back about this Christian kid who claimed to have been caught by angels in a car accident and, and stuff like that. And then he said that he lied. <laughs> so there's been times where Christians are too eager to um, believe stuff like this. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I don't think it's all a lie or hogwash necessarily. Mm-hmm. What what prompts you? What makes you so interested in it? Uh, before I got into the Christian thing, I was super duper into like the paranormal stuff, um, uh, was really into the UFO alien community. Uh, that brought me to flat earth, which brought me to Christianity. Okay. So you are a flat earther or no? Uh, I'm a truth seeker. So you're not necessarily a flat earther. You just the Bible says it's truth. flat. I'm going to go with the Bible. Oh, okay. I don't think the Bible does say it's flat, but it totally does. It totally does. All right. Um, um, yeah, I had I had actually my, my other part was a uh, one quick flat Earth question. Okay. Um, so for for you science believers with the the 500 genders and the <laughs> vaccines that stop the spread or whatever, all yeah. that science stuff. Um, you guys say or think that the moon controls the tides through gravity, right? That's what I've heard. So how do we have tsunamis? Is the moon just on the wrong side of the Earth, or does it just cancel out the gravity for that moment in time? Or? Tsunamis, I think, are related to, is it related to winds and storms? That's what I, I always think of. Or sometimes uh, earthquakes, because there's other factors that make waves, too. Right, like wind. Um, right. But I, I just don't understand the, the way that the moon wouldn't be able to control the gravity, you know, during a tsunami. It seems a little inconsistent. It's not necessarily inconsistent because the moon has some factor on like normal times, right? We could say, but there are other factors that are that can greatly make a, a spike or a anomaly, or if you will, such mm-hmm. as a storm or stuff, something like that, or an earthquake. Don't earthquakes uh, sometimes out in the sea cause a tsunami? Something like that, volcanoes or whatever. Yeah. That is well, that really? Yeah, I, mean, a, um, I guess. To, so does that to mean put it more specifically? I'm I'm more of a space denier than a, a flat earther. I don't I don't know what shape the Earth is, but I really am not believing in space anymore. Ah, oh, dang! I, it's I kind love of space. sad because I was super into space. Like I was saying, I was all into the aliens and UFO crap. I thought that stuff was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um. Uh. I I really think that space is so cool. 
<laughs> I used to as well. <laughs> is the moon capitalized when you, with a capital M? I don't know. Um, Probably. I noticed that a lot of flat earthers are pot smokers. Or were, have smoked pot. I mean, I don't, I don't have the time to get into it today, but... It might, not be, to... it might totally not be related. I'm just saying. Oh, I, you might be onto something there, but what I, I was going to say, I might need to call you and we, we need to just talk about pot and why pot's bad. Okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. But not today. Yeah. Um, it's great so, hearing yeah, from you. Are you Hispanic or white or what? I've asked I you this ask, before. Why, why do you ask me that? Do I sound racially ambiguous? You sound Hispanic to me, but you might actually oh, be white. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm German-Irish, bro. Okay. Well, that's basically that's, <laughs> that's basically Hispanic. When you say Irish, that's basically Mexican. <laughs> How can I sound more white, Hake? I don't want to sound Mexican. <laughs> Maybe because of the pot in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, t- I totally like talking with you, Alex, in California, man. That's cool. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll definitely call you again about the pot, but I just want to end on one thing. I heard the other day um, my favorite caller, Joe from Phoenix, was talking about his horses. Yeah. Um, Joe, you ain't black, dude. Black people don't have horses. They're not equestrians or whatever. That's, that's, you, don't, you don't go to the hood riding your horse. So. You do want to be careful. Joe injured his ankle, he said. Uh, oh, really? He got this new horse. Yeah, most, most horse owners uh, have you know, broken collarbones, broken legs, all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was concerned because I got a visual. The mama in me, Satan, I guess, I imagined Superman, Christopher Reeves, or Christopher Reeve or Reeves. He he got yeah, yeah. like paralyzed or something. He eventually like died at a younger age after an accident falling off the horse. Yeah, I man. When I when I when I first started working with dogs in different kennels, a lot of the women that worked there were horse owners, and every one of them had some sort of significant wow. catastrophic injury. You know, yeah. I wonder if Stay it's because they things. get too they're not uh, staying alert. I, I know it. I used to know a, a horse owner, and he had the crazy spiral break in his like tibia or fibia or something. I don't know his, his one of his lower legs. Um, yeah, you, should, you stick to safer activities like smoking pot and playing video games. <laughs> I know. I feel like uh, the powers that be that control society have turned men into like pot smokers and effeminate and gay. And, and I'm not saying the pot smokers are that, but so that we don't commit so much violent crime and stuff. <laughs> That's my conspiracy uh, theory. The main the main reason I smoke pot these days isn't to like um, get over stuff or overcome or dull feeling. It's literally because it, it gives me a nice physical sensation in my head and my body, and I enjoy that. It's kind of like a coffee or something. Yeah, I don't treat it like uh, most other potheads. But, but I'll, I'll let you go. Okay, um, sounds good. Taking that call, and uh, you have a wonderful day, Hake. You as well, Alex in California. Take care, man. Bye. Bye. That's so cool. <laughs> What's cool? That call is interesting. You never know who's listening or what. Quit pot now, says uh, Brennan. And shout out to the Flat Earthers. The Flat Earth Regiment. I wonder what percentage of, of Hake's audience are Flat Earthers. We are baltards, but are Flat Earth friendly. And that's that. Mr. Pink from California is on the line. What's up, Mr. Pink? How you doing? What's up, Hank? Hey. Hey, uh, you know me. I'm not a ball of tart or a flat tart, bro. Oh, you're not? <laughs> okay. No, I just, I, I choose not to have an opinion. That's because, fair. Once again, that's that's not something we should really focus on. But Colin yeah. is definitely wrong about one thing. What's that? It does not say in the Bible that the Earth is flat. But... It does reference the universe and the stars and stuff. Whoa. Constantly. And the heavens. So, the heavens are yeah. various things. So give me a break with that. Well, um. they, they, in their defense, they're interpreting it as saying that it's flat, basically. Yeah, Somewhere. pretty much. I yeah. mean, and there's, like, obviously a lot of interpretations. You know, the whole Jesus is God thing. Jesus is just the son of God thing. You know, once again, just, you know, wait and see attitude. Don't yeah. Take opinions. Don't identify as one thing or the other. That's that's the whole. And what what thing he I've brought up with that. the what he brought up with the uh, with the near death experiences. These are not arguments yeah. to be caught up in. <laughs> yeah. Also, I've, I've I've actually had one of those in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely one time. Uh, and you know, people can 
you know, take what they think, uh, think from what happened to me. But there was one time in my youth, I used to be a huge, like, hippity dippity type and go to all the festivals and take too many psychedelic drugs oh, kind of guy. Yeah. And uh I one time I took way too much uh L S D. Okay. Okay. And I like literally had to be saved by EMTs in the middle of a show <laughs> and I had a big out of body experience where, you know, my like I saw it vividly that the spirit world is like there. I was wow. like out of my body, and then like there were like spirits flying by by me back and forth, saying it's not your time to go. You know you're gonna be fine. We're sending you back. And then all of a sudden, I like, flashed, and my like human vision was up again, and there was like a guy beating on my chest, saying we gotta get this guy up. Wow. Yeah. So that happened. So th- if you're ever questioning whether the spirit world exists or not, I I have an attestment to the fact that it is. Yeah. But huh? And, anyway. and how do you know that that's not like the imagination or something going yeah, on? Yeah, or, or or some kind of like hallucination. Yeah, uh, right. That's why I said people can have their interpretations of what happened. Okay. To me there for yeah. sure. You know, but once again, I was the guy was like pounding on my heart to get me back to life when they, and then they had to strap me to a gurney and take me to the the medical tent for the rest of the the festival. Man, what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was just uh, stupid, stupid youth stuff. Was it a Christian and music festival? <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, definitely not. It was one of them big hippie ones in uh, in Tennessee. Oh wow. Um, but anyway, um, on a little note, because I, I, I hear caller about uh, all of the you know pot and video game stuff. Yes. Um, that's that's been me forever. Um. And I recently, like maybe like two months ago, I put down pot forever. I just cold turkey, put it down. I don't do that anymore. And I was once like really into that as like it was part of my personality wow. and all that yeah. stuff. Sorry about all the noise that's around me. It, but, I'm working um, with it. I can hear you. Okay. So, yeah, I recently put all that down. And I have found that I basically don't. Like, as far as, like, my physical and my mental perception of things, I don't really feel any different. Besides, like, I'm a little less paranoid than I was. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I, interesting. People get paranoid on pot, and it's funny. I mean, it's funny yeah, that, I, that it's supposed to calm you down, supposedly, but people get paranoid on it. Yeah, and I'm a lot less irritable and angry, and I think that came from the paranoia now that I look back. Oh. Is that I was always kind of, like, looking for somebody or something to have a problem with. Yeah. Because of my paranoia and all that. So if that means anything to anyone out there that is currently doing it, give it a shot. Because I never thought that I would be at a point where I was like, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And then one day about a couple months ago, I was just like, yeah, this is dumb, and I'm wasting a lot of money. So I just don't. I just put it down, and I, I haven't bought any, and I haven't done any for like two months. Yeah, and I'm I'm totally fine. Um, <laughs> it's not any different. Is it at all influenced from JLP talking about getting off it? In, in a way, it's also been from me uh, regularly attending the church that I attend. Yeah, and we have this kind of program that we do called Freedom That Last, and and our whole thing is uh, Jesus Christ is the only source of freedom that lasts. And it's about getting over all of life's addictions, whether yeah. that's drugs or overeating or addiction to anger or suicidal thoughts. And, and it's like a lot of the stuff that, that JLP talks about being able to get over. I like that saying yeah. from there was this this old man who said this saying, and it's probably a cliche, but a man is rich in the number of things or the amount of things he can afford to do without. And I th- it makes cool. me think of makes me think of like Joel Friday. He doesn't do coffee. He doesn't do alcohol. He doesn't do any drugs. He barely does. Yeah, ca- I respect that. Candy, maybe a little candy, but <laughs> uh, it's good. It's cool. Yeah, I used to be big on Henry the David Thoreau. Big on the alcohol. Big on quote. the psychedelic drugs. Yeah, and 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 I was able to drop all of those things. Cold turkey. You don't need some program to get over it. You don't need uh, an alternative substance to get over it. You can just do it with the power of, you know, staying present. Yeah. Watching yourself. 
That's cool. You know, like it, that whole thing that Jesse said about watch yourself smoke the cigarette, watch yourself open the pack. Yeah. Watch yourself inhale it. And not and, and then you kind of and realize, not getting like, into like judging yourself here? over it. Yeah, but it's just like you get to a point where it's, what am I doing here? Yeah. And, and when the more I got in, like into it, especially with the pot thing, it's like I'm wasting a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny too. Yeah. Yeah, really. It kind of that really weighed on me. I was like, why am I spending hundreds of dollars on something that I'm gonna? Because when once I put it down, I realized that I felt the exact same. It wasn't really helping my, you know, mind. It yeah, supposedly it calms you down, but it made you more irritable. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. In, in your case. And I think that's like that, that could be something that's going on with the black community too, is that they're so irritated and like looking for violent conflict all the they time. Have they have reefer madness. Reefer yeah, madness. That reefer madness, <laughs> that, 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 that stuff was real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so the original reason I called was uh, to to kinda talk about the food topic we were yes. discussing earlier. All right. And uh I just wanted to say it's turmeric. Turmeric. Term, turmeric. Okay. Is how you say it. Some people call okay. it turmeric, and I wanted to call it turmeric. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine too because you're using the, the you're using the first R in the word, and right. I respect that. Yeah. But turmeric is definitely definitely incorrect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's an R in there, and, and you're white. Fun. You're white. Yes, I am white. I use the King's English. <laughs> Are you Irish though? Yeah. Well, I'd say. German, Irish, <laughs> Polish, and Swanee Native American. Oh, okay. You're not very Anglo. Um, yeah, I'm not. No, I'm never, definitely not. British. Irish is kind of Anglo. Yeah, I mean, we're from the Isles. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're from those Isles. Yep. You know, I don't have any Scottish in there, but it's uh, the, Ger- the the German and Polish come from my dad's side, and then the right on the full on Irish and then Swanee Native American come from my mom. Okay, Swanee, cool name. Yeah, that's the Oklahoma tribes. Apparently, they did some blood tests, and my my one of my great 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 such and such was a uh, chief of the Swanee. Wow, my yeah. one of my great 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 grandparents was almost burned at the stake. Oh, for and I think it the, might uh, have been by Indians, but I I, I pictured by Indians, <laughs> but I'm not sure actually, and I don't know was why. He a, was I just... he a blasphemer or was he a dark <laughs> magic person? I... I don't know. I thought it was by Indians. I pictured it be- being by Indians. It was a story my mother told me, <clears throat> and I don't know if I can trust it or not, but I think I trust it. Anyway, huh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to ask her. Uh, so another point, just one more point on the food topic, then I'll yes. let you run because I know it's about hate music time. Um, so the whole GMOs and pesticides in the food. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard a thing, not the most reputable source, but I heard a thing about a long time ago in my youth that was, uh, was research about how the majority of the GMOs and the pesticides and stuff that are in or, or uh, that, that are used to affect the food so that, it's, that they don't get bugs on them or all that stuff. Yeah. By the time the food gets to the stores, most of that stuff is filtered out of it anyway. Oh. And you're Just referring to both, both the GMOs and the, and the pesticides, or what? So the chemicals that they use to make the food bigger or to keep the bugs out yeah. or all that stuff is not actually in the product that you're buying, like, actively. That's what they concluded. Oh. That. So I, it was like it took me a little bit to process because I was always, oh, organic, oh, non-GMO. Right. You know? Yeah. But then I realized a long time ago working in the grocery store business, and uh, I knew a guy that ran a farm, a like chicken egg kind of deal. Okay. Is that if you, you know how much it costs to, for any company to get the USDA organic stamp on their product? Every single product individually, like not like one by one, but like say you got a brand of like milk and it's like the whole milk and the 2% and this and that. The USDA organic label that you have to go through yeah. to get approved. It costs like a hundred grand. Wow! For the company to get that process completely done. Yeah. To have that stamped on there. So a lot of companies don't even do that, but a lot of their products are not really. They're no different from the G- the certified organic. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. But they what don't a, want to pay that. What a racket! Fee. Yep. Yeah, it's a ridiculous uh, government, you know, thing. Yeah. 
I so could I believe what, it. What we got to what we got to worry about more is this human error going on with stuff. Yes. In the stores, like so, be selective about what you're buying for sure, and be sure to wash your stuff off correctly. Because, I mean, just the other day, I, I read an article about a guy at a Safeway around here. I think it was in Culver City or something. And the guy had been caught on camera, and he's like in jail now. And he was like pleasuring himself on the produce. Oh, uh, I think an, I heard an employee like that. It's crazy. Yeah, he was an employee at the Safeway. People got issues. Yeah, so definitely. So it's a human error we got to watch more than just like, oh, there's chemicals and everything. Yeah. Because I also, uh, it was like years ago, I read a, a read an article and I had a video of the guy doing it. He was like spraying all of the chicken in the meat department with like a bleach. Wow. Because <laughs> he thought it was like normal. Yeah. He was just a dummy that they hired. And he's like, oh, this is how you sanitize it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's totally crazy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they've. I feel like the quality of people and workmanship and uh, standards and following the rules and discipline has gone down the tubes, and they're rewarding yeah, people for the, not being the disciplined. Intellect, yeah, the intellect. Yeah, intellect. Like complete dummies, they're hiring that, that think that they know what they're doing. And Everybody on pot. Com- <laughs> way, way, yeah, way off base, and either mentally ill or affected by some kind of alternative substance. Yeah. Ugh. So, anyway, cool. Well, thank you, man. Thanks for the uh, education, Mr. Pink. Yeah, appreciate you, Hank. All Hank right. music time. All right. Take care. Uh, Thoreau, not Thoreau. <laughs> Henry David Thoreau. Or is it the Rao? <laughs> I have mispronounced Rao as Ro. Rao means fight in British or English. But I don't speak English. I speak American English. So I don't know anything about Rao, meaning fight. Uh, he did say Hake music time. <sighs> but I don't want to take Hake music yet. I was thinking I would take one more call and then get to more super chats and see what I have time, see what I can do. Jaime in Minnesota is on the line. Jaime, thank you for calling and holding, man. What is up? Hey, uh, I was uh, listening to you about that welfare thing, and uh, the question doesn't seem very well built, because uh, when you're on welfare, you have to um, qualify, so you can't make over a certain amount of money. Yeah. So the way that the question was posed kind of sounded like if you take doing your job already could get welfare and work and get the money. Yeah. Would you? And uh, that's not how that works. Right. Anybody who, uh, like, I make a lot of money. Yeah. I would never go on welfare because then I couldn't have another job. Right. And go on welfare. And welfare is not going to be enough. I'll make more money working. True. Have a better standard of living. Yep. So, uh, now, I live in Minnesota, and last year or the year before, there was a surplus, you know, of money. So they, they gave everybody a, a, a refund who worked. Okay, nice. You know? Who had paid so, taxes. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I got that, and that's, you know, I'll take that. But that's but getting that's your money welfare. back, basically. Right. So, uh, also, you know, with welfare, uh, if you go on welfare, you shouldn't be allowed to vote. I kind of agree. I agree. Because you're bribed, you're you're being bribed. Yeah. Yeah. At least for for that year or whatever, because people come off welfare, go on welfare sometimes. Yeah. There's good people that go on welfare, and there's bad people that go on welfare. I know what you mean. Yep. But uh, that, that's my my point on those things. Anybody who's working a, a job, you know, 40-something hours, making a good amount of money, uh, isn't going to want to go on welfare. Yeah. It's not enough. And the place, like if you get a house, a HUD housing or something, uh-huh. the housing sucks. I've... And you have to take that that house. You know, the apartments, Yeah, they're not great. Right. And the neighbors are not great. Even if you're great, which most of the time you're not great either. <laughs> right. So yeah. I mean, you have to 
you have to deal with a lot of crap if you're going to go on welfare. And I, it's not worth it. I would love for them to get rid of welfare, get rid of minimum wage, um, enforce the immigration laws, and then people would go back to work and uh, and money would start to be worth something again, maybe. Well, I, I disagree with you. I okay. don't think people will go back to work. I think people get really, really angry. Yeah. And then there's going to be a big mess, and some people are going to be left behind. And uh, what do you mean by that? We'll go back to work, left behind. Like, well, if you stick to it and you don't give welfare. Yeah. And I've seen it with drug addicts, you know, and alcoholics. Uh huh. Is uh, if you try to help them and they don't do it, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They die. They die. They just die of alcoholism. Oh, so say, if, if a person is broke and poor and doesn't want to work, like you see it, the homeless. Uh huh. But that's, they die. They die on the streets. Fine. And if we took away welfare, <laughs> if they die. Be a they lot die. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. If they die, he dies. Whatever. Right. I. Th- there is too much mama enabling going on in the world. Right. So everybody won't start working again. No. That's. Uh, but a lot of people would. And yeah, some people would. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you just refuse. Nope. Nope. Nope, we're not. Right, but well, you can't I, convince you can't convince everyone to do that, and it's not you know. It's a moot point. We should get rid of some of the paper, extra paperwork that it takes when somebody dies, <laughs> so it's not a whole bunch of extra paperwork, so it's less costly. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Um, a lot of police have to file these different reports. There's all kinds of uh, potential lawsuits. We should get rid of. Most of the lawyers and judges, because all these lawsuits that are happening are also raising costs. Uh, for what? For when somebody di- a wrongful death lawsuit, um, all these lawsuits to stop the border from being enforced in Texas, all these lawsuits for this and that. Um, they're, they've weaponized the... Um, these lawyers aren't producing value. And these judges aren't producing value in the world, yet they're still making a, a racket off of a corruptible system. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> I'm, but, uh, I'm, uh, like, uh, if people die on the street by not making money because you took all the wel- welfare away, yeah, there's no wrongful death there. There's no lawsuit there. There's, there's just, you got to pick them up and uh, put them somewhere. Yeah. Right. But uh, I also thought, was thinking about that taxes thing, and uh, I heard from a source Uh that uh, if you don't file your taxes, that's illegal. But if you don't pay it, that's not illegal. Oh. Uh, And then I also read on the IRS website, because I was on there, and it said... uh, you know, the the thinking that income tax is illegal is a wrong idea. It's a, a bogus idea. It's not in the Constitution that you're not supposed to pay income taxes. I, they changed the Constitution in order to allow, from what I heard, um, they changed the Constitution to allow an income tax or a property tax or something. What do you mean? When did they do that? I mean, I don't know when it was. That's okay. just something that I heard somewhere. I know Is that, that like, I know that tariffs are specifically mentioned in the Constitution. Um, tariffs, you know, what Trump tariffs. did with China and all that. Right. Imports, that, stuff well, like that. Well, anyways, uh, maybe they did change it. Maybe they didn't. But it makes me think about, you know, how um, the the people that get pulled over, they call themselves sovereign citizens. Yeah. You can't pull me. I don't have to give you ID. You know, you, I don't need an ID to drive. I'm traveling, not driving. Yeah. It makes me think that that's the kind of same thing with the income tax. You know, do you it's think like the sovereign, sovereign citizens citizen kind of deal? It it is similar to that because yeah, you're and, you're not. Tr- it just shows you that you're not truly free. The government does own you. You have to comply uh, if you want to stay free. If you want to stay out of jail, you have to comply, basically. 
Well, you just have to file your taxes. You don't even have to pay them. Well, I disavow that for the sake of the channel. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what But I that's heard. what you've heard, yeah. Of yeah, course, so you. It's not illegal to not pay it. It's illegal to not file it. Okay. All right. So you uh, file it, but you don't necessarily pay it, and then they come knocking. Hey, you pay, you owe this. Right. And they then, can send you letters and stuff. I think they can come get you. I think. Not if you don't file it. It's the problem with the filing. Yeah. And this is a, a source that I, I trust. Okay. And uh, they got a YouTube channel, so I won't say. Yeah. Well, I won't. I, I don't endorse such an idea just for the sake of my channel, especially since I don't know. And right, you me wanna, neither. I'll, I'll pay them all day. And yeah. It's fine with me. Okay. Better safe than sorry, you know? Uh, but, yeah, and then the pot. The pot, um, with the, the guy that called about he, he smokes pot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I used to smoke pot, too. Uh-huh. And uh, this was like 10 years ago. And it, the well, pot that I got wasn't so, it wasn't crazy strong, but it was strong. Was it but, for pain? Uh, no, it was just for fun. Oh, okay. But also, uh, my wife's dad smoked pot, and this was like 50, 60 years ago, and that stuff wasn't strong at all. Right. You know? So the pot that you know people are smoking right now, it's not like some ditch weed kind of stuff. It's strong. I've heard that. It's probably up there with some of the hard drugs, you know? And if people are doing it every day, every day, every day, you're melting your brains. Hmm. You know, and uh, that's not good. Yeah, it's bad. And yeah. then you're gonna start falling for all kinds of things, and then you're gonna start becoming a, a flat earther. <laughs> you know, believe in all kinds of crazy ideas. There are then, worse you know, things, but yeah, true. Yeah, you don't want to uh, get you don't want to get into mess. No, yeah, but uh, uh, luckily, you know, the human body can repair itself from a lot. Yeah, but you got to stop. Uh, Nice. Well, that's, that's a great message. That's about it. So we talked about welfare, taxes, and drugs. Taxes kind of proves that you don't even own your property. You have to pay rent to the government. Well, that's a local tax, right? Property taxes. Isn't that is that local? State, I think. I don't know. State, local, or state? Yeah, one of them. I think it's local. Okay. So if you lived on a different you know, locality, then you wouldn't have to pay. Some localities don't have property tax. I think that's true. You Do you own some land? Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disclose okay. my, my VAX status or what I own. <laughs> okay, okay. But, uh, nice, man. Great call. I appreciate right. it, Jaime. You have a good day, sir. You as well. Take care. Okay, Super Chats, guys. I got to read these Super Chats that have come in. Terry bought a coffee. It takes two men, Joel and Sean, to match the energy of the one and only Hake. <laughs> Joel and Sean, uh, Joel Friday, that is, and Sean, the producer, are um, a solid one, too. Thank you, guys, for uh, filling in. That was cool. P.S. Please have H.R., Human Resources, speak to Joel Friday about his harmful and inflammatory anti-feline rhetoric. I don't even know if he knows what that means. Against cats? Against cats? Nope, he says nope. (laughs) Who's HR? Who would be HR in the office? I think Hassan is HR. Human Resources. He polices our language. (laughs) Uh, Nice, thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. Over on Streamlabs.com, Gregatron bought a super chat saying, Hey, Friday's show was the bomb! Shout out to Joel, Joe, and Tony. Joel Friday guest hosted Friday. Tony had me laughing out loud. LOL. Funny. Tony, I... Joel brought stuff... I'm interrupting his super chat to tell you guys. Joel Friday was able to bring stuff out of Joe from Phoenix and Tony from California that I had not noticed so explicitly before. Either that or I'm just a listener, or both. I was being a listener, I was not engrossed in as part of the conversation. You know, because being a listener is different from being the, the host. You're, it's a different experience. 
Um, but Joel Friday did not get caught up the way that Hake sometimes does with Joe, with Joe from Phoenix and Tony from California. And Tony from California said, I can't stand it when people believe lies. <laughs> he said something like that, didn't he? I'm like, so this is Tony. He's just being emotional about other people believing lies. He calls, every day that he calls in, he says something that's not true. And his old thing is based on an untruth. You don't have a right to be mad about somebody believing something crazy. But that's what a whole lot of us get sucked into. So we're just like Tony. Did you know that you're just like Tony? If you're bothered by somebody believing lies. Whoa. Wake up. <laughs> and shout out to Tony. We need to find a, give a, a way to give him super chats, says Gregatron. Back to his super chat. That man really is a trip. Indeed he is. Also, Joel maintained the number of views, to, so shout out to him for that. Oh yeah, right on. Joel Friday did not disappoint. He maintained uh, the number of viewers that Haig had. That's cool. Thank you, Gregatron. That's great. And also, it was interesting seeing uh, Joe from Phoenix just... Because he would say, I don't hate Trump. I don't hate Trump. I don't hate Trump. But then he repeatedly called Trump a, don't say this word, kids or ladies, scumbag. But he doesn't hate him. You shout out to the scumbags, I guess. No hate. No hate for scumbags. From Joe from Phoenix, nor hate. If we don't hate anybody. Uh, nice. Thank you, Gregatron. Evil is still real donated a Rumble rant. Did I miss the Bond Pro PDF file hour? Question mark. Every state has property tax. <laughs> oh. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought that there were some areas that didn't have it. Like Reno, Nevada, Seattle, Washington. I don't know. So the whole country is socialist, you're telling me. Jen Mull bought a, a rumble rant saying, love this as an encore after the JLP show. Nice. Thank you, Jen Mull. Appreciate that. And thank you, Evil is Still Real, the chat, educating Hake. Because Hake doesn't know anything. A super chat from Lin Yen Chin on Streamlabs. Why does Frederick L.A.? Sound like a <laughs> Down Syndrome. Shout out to the Down Syndrome. Dave Chappelle. It's like I am hearing a Chappelle character that he wasn't bold enough to include in his old skits from when he was funny 20 years ago. Or 20 years ago. Amusing. <laughs> That's messed up, Lin Yun Chin. Shout out to Aries One for the diamonds over there on D Live. Shall I open the treasure chest since I'm here? Let me open the treasure chest. See if I can do it. And I'll even give you guys... Oh, thanks, Potley, for uh, the support. That's cool. Okay. So thank you guys for the support over there on DLive. Okay. It's Women's History Month, and I make a joke out of it, because it is a joke, but tomorrow is the Women's Forum, okay? Ladies, join the Women's Forum, third Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. at Bond and Law's Angeles. It is a highlight of the month, at least the men's forums for the men, first Thursday of the month at Bond and Los Angeles. Not recorded, not streamed, no pictures, no recordings, no audio no recordings, um, no gossiping after the fact. Uh, rebuildingtheman.com slash events. They are a highlight of the month. 7 p.m. at Bond in Los Angeles. As I said, they sort of energize you. But you are still tired. But you're energized. And you appreciate it. You don't regret it, generally. Going. And participating. Double mic. Oh, double chest. Yeah. Um, so in the spirit of the women's forum... <laughs> 
uh, and emotions and ladies and Women's History Month, let's play Over the Rhine. Over the Rhine, where I'm going to skip to the end. Yeah. Over the Rhine, Wednesday. It's Christian, guys, or liberal. I hope you enjoy this. This is called Nobody Number One from the 2003 double album, Ohio. Hope you enjoy it. Be right back for the rest of Hour Two. Oh, no. Terrible. There we go. I'm afraid I've lost a piece of me I need the most. You say this puzzle is really just about the need to be somebody. I'm afraid I'm not all that you see All along the coast of me I'm camouflaged A desert mirage I know by day But you came so close And I assumed you were looking for the piece of yourself that's lost It is the hiding place inside everybody and though we love to numb the pain, we come to learn that it's in vain. Pain is our mother, she makes us recognize each other. Come on now, child, don't cry. Come on now, child, don't cry. Let's give it one more try. feel so all alone here in this city I call my home They say, hey, you're one of us, funny I should feel so anonymous But I'm drawn to you and that still small voice is talking to And that's the voice that so seldom can get through Come on now, child, don't cry I forgot my, uh... Well, thank you guys for bearing with me through, my opinion, nice music. Some people liked it. Okay, good ending, though, says Jose. People thought she was rapping, spoken word. Uh, 
Hayek listens to Meredith Brooks, Natasha Bedingfield, all these people. Uh, somebody said woke uh, <laughs> Sinead O'Connor. I thought Sinead O'Connor was already, like, very, very liberal before she died. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, I mean, they're Christians, but they're liberals. I think that that was uh, Karen Bergquist. And her husband, uh, Linford Detweiler, who plays the piano. You blast that at home. Yeah, I like, I like their, some of their stuff. Over the Rhine. Over the Rhine. R-H-I-N-E. I think it's in Ohio somewhere. It's a uh, neighborhood. That was the worst song I've ever heard in my entire life. This, is, this takes the cake for the worst song played on the Hake Report, says Shanna K. I don't know if that's... I don't know if you get out much, or I don't know if you've caught much Hake Report. There's been many bad songs that I've played. Perfect Women's Month song, says Seesaw. Thank you, Seesaw. Right on. Anyway, thank you guys for bearing with me once again. That's cool. Let me talk about um, some of the stuff going on in the world. They say that with all these war, with all this war stuff going on, people are starving or not getting good clean water. So they are getting like diarrhea and dying from that, like getting dehydrated from that because they're drinking the bad water and then they just kind of goes through them and then nothing stays down or stays in your stomach. And you're dying, people are dying from that, or starving, or whatever, or famine. Haiti, um, perhaps parts of Ukraine, I don't know. Gaza, they're saying. It's wild. It's wild. People say that Haiti, that in Haiti there is, uh, cannibalism going on. And I don't know if that's just to be vicious, to make a point. Like I saw this, maybe it was a propaganda video of this Muslim over in the Middle East who, cover your ears, kids, I guess, and sensitive, tenderhearted, ladies, maybe. They covered, cut out a guy's heart and pretended to take a bite out of it or, or bit, at, bit it. Terrible, huh? But that's not, that's not desperation necessarily or hunger. That's just, oh, a domination thing over your enemies. Just some sort of sick domination um, signal. Sick thing. Kind of like what the ladies say that our word is about. It might partly be, I guess. Oh, our word is not because you're, it's s word you all. It's because it's domination. <laughs> well, how about like a little bit of, of, of both, maybe? And you people in the chat were informing me, and I heard it on the Jesse Lee Peterson show today, that, that, that chaos is coming to America, and illegals, or at least one illegal, allowed to carry a gun. Nice. Guess we can get rid of all background checks, says uh, Bradley in the chat. Nice. So the illegals get their Second Amendment, their basic right to carry a guns. I guess it's a human right. If you're human, you get to carry a gun. Unless you're a felon or have a mental illness or have a red flag law against you. The, um, they say that the executive branch ignores the legislative branch and the judicial branch, so why should Texas comply with uh, these, this staying of their law? Staying of enforcement of their law, preventing them from enforcing their law. Their law to arrest these illegals who are suspected of being illegals, or of being here illegally. Why should they... Uh, respect it. 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like taking the risk of not paying taxes even though you've filed them. What a mess. It's terrible stuff. Um, <laughs> it's terrible stuff going on in the world. There's a lot of lack of trust in the government because the tr government has proven to be untrustworthy. What a mess. And we're, sp we're supposed to take care of everybody in the world, <laughs> and then they don't take care of themselves. So, not really. Crazy. Haiti is such a mess, it makes me sad, says Terry. You know, I was reading this article from another Christian woman who has been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, Dorothy Greco. Dorothy Greco, a Christian woman. Sort of liberal. Upset at the, um, supposedly upset about the death in Ukraine, all of the death in the war in Ukraine. I don't understand being upset about that. Because uh, unless you're just focusing on it, <laughs> uh, because it's, it has nothing to do with you. There's nothing you can do about it. There is, uh, they're just telling you about it. There's all kinds of other evil in the world that's happening that you don't know about, but you're upset about this because your attention is being directed. It shows me that we are puppets, and uh, these ladies who get upset about different things are being manipulated by what the media draws their attention to, or people draw their attention to. Whatever their attention is drawn to, that's what they focus on, and get upset about it, and it's a mess. I say, don't be sad. Don't be mad. You know what I mean? Jelly bean? But it is a mess. And it is... I, I, but I don't think you should be sad. So chin up, queen, princess. <laughs> or uh, popper girl. Popper, popper means poor, right? I don't know. Haitians play... Cheer up. The Haitians can play basketball barefooted, I heard from the chat. That's cool. Right on. I grew up in Haiti. It's just getting worse, says Fanum Naturel. Yeah. Shout out to the Haitians. Crazy. What a mess. <sighs> so, in that, on the, in that vein, let me tell you about these supposedly happiest countries. Do you believe it? I don't know if I believe it. And then we'll get to space if I have time. Okay. Uh, I mentioned this in Hake News. Finland has held on to its top ranking for seven years straight. Shout out to the Finnish. F-I-N-N-I-S-H, I think. Finland. F-I-N-L-A-N-D. They are the world's happiest country. Supposedly, on average. And it's done by this Canadian professor who's an economics professor who I heard in the comments, which I don't know if this is true, that he's 86 years old, John Hellowell, founder of, founding editor of World Happiness Report. Uh, GDP per capita, gross domestic pr product, and then they divide it by the number in the, in the population, I guess. For, so per capita, per, per head, per person. Social support, healthy life expectancy, so you can live to 86 or longer, and all 86 of those years, are, you have your mobility and stuff like that. Freedom, generosity, perceptions of corruption. Denmark, number two. Iceland, number three. Sweden, number four. All oh, those Nordic countries. And I noted that they are tall, also white. Not necessarily Anglo, but some form of white. Trump wanted these Nordic country people to come to our country. 
instead of these loophole countries, allegedly, according to, I thought it was New York Times, but maybe it was NBC. Norway, number seven. I had a Norwegian caller who was happy being distracted with pot <laughs> rather than taking care of his son. So is happiness right? I don't know. Israel, number five. A hey, shout out to Israel. Pretty uh, homogenous white countries, if you will. <laughs> Not necessarily Christian. Leftover Christian, sort of. Israel came about as a result of Christians. This Israel that exists today would not exist were it not for Christians, I think. And the UN, which is not very Christian. <laughs> anyway, uh, Palestine's number 103, so don't go to Palestine. United States is number 23, Germany number 24. Kicked out of the top 20 in part because Czech, Czechia, Lithuania, and Slovenia increased. United Kingdom was number 20 in terms of happiest countries, whether or not this is a good thing or not. Is this guy a socialist, this economics professor out of Canada, maybe? A liberal mama? This person who's measuring it, his quote-unquote happiness? Uh, I mentioned that the United States and Canada, and also in Australia and New Zealand to a lesser extent, the happiness among the young people under 30, dramatically lower than for those age 60 and over. Among people under 30, U.S. ranked number 62. In other words, 61 happier, pe happier countries, allegedly. While those 60 and older was number 10. United States top 10 country, happiest countries to live in per, uh, for the 60-year-olds year, old, year olds and older. Shout out to the boomers, huh? Canada is number 58 among the young. Really unhappy. And number 8 for those 60 and older. So that's a, those are countries on decline, apparently. At least emotionally. Maybe the 60-plus-year-olds are more resilient and the young whippersnappers are weak. But it's more than just that, obviously. It's a mess. Happiness is of the devil, says Carver 531. A cheerful heart is good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Didn't I quote that Bible verse like last week or something like that? Um, don't worry about the outside world, I say. Don't worry, period, I say. Nice. Canada is on decline, it's true. Okay, let me get to uh, Brian in Missouri, who's on the line. Brian, thank you for calling and holding. What's up? Hey, I was just, um, I have a theory about just kind of immigration and Haiti and all that, and I just wanted to see... Uh, if you think I uh, have a good idea or if it's just my perception. So Let's let me hear get it. going here. Cool. I was pretty young when 9-11 happened. I was only eight years old. Um, but before 9-11, I remember on the news and just everywhere in general, the, it seemed like the main concern of all the people in the United States was how can we get these third world countries to, like, a better place, to where they're not S-hole countries, right? And, like, I remember, like, National Guard units were always deploying to, like, build schools, give people vaccines, like, all this stuff. And that may just be my perception, but it felt like after 9-11, we just abandoned the third world, and we just fought wars from there until, like, two years ago. And now... We kind of turned our head back to the third world, but we're, like, pushing, like, a weird trans agenda on them. Yeah. I just want to know your perception on that. I, th I think that there's truth to that. I don't know how long NATO, for example, NATO nations force all of their member nations to be supportive of the LGBTIQ so-called rights, and that's gotten twisted. Um... 
And I don't know how long that's been going on, but it has been a long time coming. The radicals have been infiltrating and subverting and pushing. Um, I do kind of remember there, has, there was a do-gooder thing. When I say do-gooder, I mean taking care of these third world countries, Africa, uh, some of these south of the border countries, missionaries mm -hmm. and uh, government and so-called non-government organizations have been pushing for that stuff. Presidents have been about it. The Clinton Foundation. Didn't the Clinton Foundation pretend like they were helping Haiti or something? Yeah, but that was that was after 9-11. That was, oh, okay. you know, in like 2006 or so something. So there has been some, like, of this do-gooder stuff even after. But, uh, yeah, there have been all this war stuff. Uh, this war stuff is weird because... I don't know if you were ever in the military, but I wasn't in the military. I started to go into it, and then I stopped. I was. Uh, okay, so you were you were involved in places that were involved in quote unquote wars or military action. I, I never had a, a combat deployment, but okay, yeah, I was a part of uh, operations overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not because we've been doing this war stuff more or less for over a hundred years. Maybe 150 years. Yeah, I guess it's just kind of my perception was more like like the Cold War ended, so yeah. the Soviet menace was gone, and then the first time we were challenged internationally was the first Gulf War. Right. And we just completely dominated. And it was like, okay, we are in charge. This is our world. Like, what we say goes. And we... we it felt like, and I was very young, like I said, I was born in the 90s, but it just, everything felt good. It felt like we were in control. I mean, it just, it seemed like a, a good time to be alive. And I know Bill Clinton was president, so I know you guys probably don't like that, but I mean, the economy was rolling, and it was like 9-11 hit, and then it just seemed like the military-industrial complex just took over everything. They, like they it did. feels like there's like a military junta in charge. <laughs> wow, yeah, I think you might be kind of right. They, they definitely exploited the fear slash anger slash emotions of 9-11, for example. To this day, I think New Yorkers get emotional when you talk to them about 9-11, at least when I do. Well, and like, do you remember like Barack Obama, his second campaign, he said, I ended two wars. I remember he specifically said that. He really? Said, I ended two wars. I, I ended the war in Afghanistan. I ended the war in Iraq. And we still have troops in Iraq, and we just got, you know, humiliated out of Afghanistan yeah. three years ago. Yep. So, I mean, and it's like people voted for him to end those wars. At least some people did. Right. We were, a lot of and, us, I didn't vote for him, but a lot of us were like, what are, what is what is Bush doing, you know? Uh huh. And I didn't care. I was getting kind of tired of Bush. And not that I even was paying attention to politics. It was just an emotional thing, and I wasn't. I didn't know. I didn't care. I didn't want Obama there because I did, I knew that he was a liberal and a liar. Um, mm -hmm. and I knew that this excitement over him being black was stupid. But uh. But I kind of was excited about, oh, something different. <laughs> so I yeah. think that there's probably a lot of idiot voters uh, like me, even though I didn't vote for him, um, who were thinking that way. People are, it just shows that people are suckers and exploited and used like puppets, like uh, manipulated. Well, that doesn't make me feel good, but I appreciate uh, time on the air. Yeah, I appreciate your call. It's it's pretty interesting, man. Brian in Missouri, call me again sometime. Sure, bye. Bye. Wow. <sighs> I didn't know that Obama claimed to end the war in Afghanistan or Iraq. That's interesting. I'm not going to be able to play that last... I'm not going to be able to play work hard Wednesdays, guys. He didn't. He didn't end all that stuff. Crazy. Ah, uh, papa.
I have a rule not to take calls at five minutes till, and I have to end at five minutes till, and we're at five minutes till, five minutes till. But I'm going to go to Russ in Hampton, Virginia, who's on the line here. Russ, how you doing, man? Thanks for calling. Yes, sir. I'm all right. Right on. Um, I want to first of all say I'm asking a question, and I'm not, you know, trying to. Um, what do I want to say? I, I'm not trying to uh, challenge you on your thought process about this. But I just know that you pretty much follow what Jesse B. Peterson says. You feel the same way that Jesse B. Peterson feels. And I was just wondering if you... Um, have the same thought process of people's uh, ability to own guns. Because I think that gun violence is powerful. And the wrong person with a gun in the hand does incredible damage. And I also think that if you stop people from having guns, then that is a wonderful thing. So you want my take on that? Sure. I think, for one, that's a mama thing to uh, stop people from having guns. Cause Don't you're, do that. What do you mean that's a mama thing? Because you're thinking that you're protecting uh, people by taking away people's right to protect themselves. Why do you need a gun? If if nobody has a gun, why do you need one? There's no such thing as nobody has a gun. If you if you stop people from having the right to own a gun, then yes, then nobody will have them. Um, eventually you may, you may diminish all that stuff. And I, I think that's, I've argued with people about that before, but I got to end, man. I got to end. Call me tomorrow on this. This is too long of a discussion for me to, for me to, uh, do it with you, man. Take care Russ in Hampton, Virginia. Yes, sir. All right. Bye. Ain't no monkeys in my family tree. Joel Friday going to come up next. This is the Knights of the New Crusade. Adios, America. Bye. <laughs> well, there's monkeys in the jungle, there's monkeys in the zoo. They do got monkeys in some of our schools. They tell us that God didn't make the world in seven days. They want us to believe that we are far from the apes. Well, I don't know about them, but I know about me. And there ain't no monkeys in my family tree. The monkeys in the vines, and you'll see them up in trees. Even see him right there on the TV. They claim that Jonah never lived in the belly of a whale. That our ancestors walked around dragging their tails. I don't know about them, but I know about me. There ain't no monkeys in my family tree. When you see some monkeys, they look kind of cute. But not when they're wearing a tie and a suit. Big book of lies and a fancy degree. Trying to make a monkey out of Anti-evolution. Shout out to the evolution believers. I don't care. It's probably. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, some monkeys are honest and some monkeys are crooks. Some of those monkeys even ride dishonest monkey books. They'll monkey say books. that Jesus' miracles never did occur and that our ancestors were covered in fur. monkeys in my family tree no there ain't no monkeys in my family tree adios america joel friday tv oh coming up next don't end the stream yet don't end it i have to uh add joel in i forgot to add joel in here <laughs> don't end the stream hang on complicated business folks
complicated business. Imposing your religion on others is what's happening next. <laughs> okay, I guess now you can end the stream. <laughs> Terrible. That was a close one. Bye.